In a changing world, you can count on the Charleston Daily Mail, West Virginia's only Pulitzer Prize winning newspaper, to show up on your doorstep every day. There are stories to inform you, and stories to entertain you, and there's a story in how the newspaper is made. It's still dark outside when sports editor Don Hager arrives at the Daily Mail newsroom. By 4 a.m., he's busy pulling scores and stories off the newswires. He's also editing stories written the night before by the sports staff. Daily Mail sports writers provide on-the-scene coverage of events across a wide area. That means a lot of time with the players for Tom Aloise, who covers sports from football to baseball. While the Daily Mail strives to get as much breaking news as possible into each day's paper, some stories are prepared in advance. Section front features often are planned ahead, with the subjects interviewed and photographed the day before. It's Hager's job to decide how to place the story and pictures on the page. As Hager works, other members of the news staff arrive. The news clerk has begun work on the obituaries. The Daily Mail is one of the few newspapers that still runs short news stories of all local deaths at no charge to families. The clerk calls about 65 funeral homes a day. Between calls, she also gathers information for a comprehensive, concise weather page. By 6 a.m., the copy desk is on hand. The news editor combs through the wire service offerings for the day, selecting stories for inside news pages and setting aside the most important stories. A little later, in a meeting with top editors, you'll offer those for page one. Other copy editors already are writing headlines and checking proofs of pages they've completed the day before. The page with TV listings and coverage about television programs and the comics page, for example, are done in advance. A technological revolution is taking place in the newspaper industry, and the Associated Press leaf scanner used to transmit photos is one example. A copy editor sits at a computer screen to scan the dozens of photos available from the wire service each day. By touching a key, she orders the pictures she needs for today's paper. Because we have the prosecutor saying, you know, yeah, we have reason to suspect this guy. It'd be nice to get some police, a police yeah. official. So do you think I should try to get the At 6.30 a.m., the police reporter is already yeah. making calls to area law enforcement agencies. She gathers tips about events that have occurred overnight and starts calling other officials for more details. The pace picks up in the newsroom as the city desk crew and the rest of the reporting staff arrive. Reporters quickly skim the competition. At the Daily Mail, reading on the job is a must. By 7 a.m., an assistant city editor is getting a quick rundown on the stories each reporter will write for today's paper. Within the next 45 minutes, every story will have a spot reserved on a page. The U.S. Attorney's Office filed the uh, charges yesterday against the St. Owens banker who was embezzled about $500,000, they say. Family values. Isn't that wonderful? Mm -hmm. That's what Gaston said. Well, he's pretty much, you know, echoing Bill Clinton. It's 7.15 a.m. Top editors are gathering for their daily page one meeting. Here's where the news editor presents his offering of the most important national and international stories from the wire services and the city editor pitches the best local stories. And she's going to um, try to develop a profile of this guy, who he is. You know, I mean, we know he's a forestry research person, but we don't know much else about him. And she's going to try to talk to the detective that was Frank's primary source in his story when he went up there. Morgantown rapist, hurricane story, I like the metric highways on the way. I don't think we're ready for the Hugo sidebar yet. As the page one meeting breaks up, the newsroom kicks into high gear. The city editor gives the copy desk a rundown of all local stories being written by reporters. Copy editors match the stories and their estimated links to their page layouts and decide what kind of headlines the stories will need. Also working on deadline are the newspaper's two business writers. The business editor confers each morning with a copy editor. A mix of national and local stories is used on the page. On Tuesdays, the business staff prepares an entire section of the Daily Mail. On the front are news stories, trend pieces, features about local businesses or members of the business community, and a column by the business editor. Inside, you'll find useful information like local mortgage rates and stock prices. While the news staff concentrates on deadline, 
Life section editor Julianne Kemp is giving a final check to the pages she's prepared the day before. The feature sections of the Daily Mail cover everything from birth to death. There's advice on child rearing, gardening, and cooking. There are trend pieces on fashion and home decorating. There's medical and financial information for the young and old. And there are lots of stories that are just plain fun to read. Working closely with the newspaper's writers are its photographers. They too are professional journalists who are called on to apply their skill and creativity to a variety of situations. Like the life section staff, the editorial writers begin their day by checking pages prepared the day before. In this case, it's the page that contains not only opinion pieces written by Daily Mail editors, but also letters from readers, columns by nationally known journalists, and political cartoons. A little later, the editorial writers, editor, and publisher gather for a meeting. They discuss current issues and controversies, deciding not only what topics are worthy of editorials, but also what the newspaper's position will be. I think we need to talk to the governor about that, because that was a promise they made to us when we were, a year and a half ago, when we were complaining about the debt load. And, and in Maryland, you have to go before a commission. Some of the cartoons that appear on the editorial page are drawn by Daily Mail artist Brad Diller. But that's only one of the many types of art Diller produces for the newspaper. He also illustrates feature stories and designs a variety of graphics, such as maps and charts, to go with news stories. Adding flavor to the Daily Mail are its columnists, such as Richard Grimes, Chuck Landon, and L.T. Anderson. Each attracts a large following of faithful readers. As deadline approaches, reporters finish their stories and send them through the computer to the city desk. After being edited, stories are sent again through the computer to the copy desk. There, each story gets a final edit and a headline. By striking a key, the news editor then releases the stories into type. At this point, the newspaper's production department takes over. Using the news staff's layout as their guide, composing room workers paste the strips of type into position on the paper. Complete pages are taken across the hall to camera and plate making, where they are photographed by industrial cameras for conversion into the plates used on the press. Earlier in the day, the ad department has been busy selling and designing effective ad messages. At 10.30 a.m., the press starts to roll for the first edition. A member of the news staff is standing by to get some of the first newspapers to be printed. Grabbing a dozen newspapers still fragrant with fresh ink, the staffer rushes back to the newsroom. There, editors quickly scan the pages for errors. From the press room, the papers travel by conveyor belt to the mail room, where advertising circulars are inserted and the papers are bundled. Copies of the first edition are rushed to vending boxes and convenience stores in time for lunch hour readers. It also will go to homes in the more distant parts of the Daily Mail's coverage area. Charleston newspaper trucks travel hundreds of miles delivering newspapers from Bluefield to Morgantown and Huntington to Pocahontas County. But the Daily Mail story doesn't end here. Although some members of the staff have been on the job for more than six hours, there's still the second edition to go. That's the edition with even more of today's breaking news in it. After finishing their first edition stories, reporters head to City Hall, the Courthouse, the State House, and other locations to ferret out the day's news. They'll return to the newsroom to file second edition stories by noon. Back in the newsroom, the procedure followed for the first edition is being followed in briefer fashion. Editors meet once again to discuss whether anything should be changed on page one. A team of city desk and copy editors go through the paper page by page to plan for any changes that must be made for the second edition. Some stories are updated and others are replaced with new ones. Shortly after midday, the newspaper is ready for its readers. Whether they grab it fresh off the press from a downtown box or find it waiting on their doorstep when they arrive home from work. But does the new staff go home for the day? No way. They're already working on the next day's Charleston Daily Mail. <laughs>